Welcome to Needle Felting Basics. My name is Susie, and today we'll be going over your basic supplies, tools, and some techniques you'll need to get started in needle felting. Needle felting is a pretty easy hobby to get into. You need very little supplies to get started, and with a few basic techniques, you can come up with quite a few different projects. First, the basic tools you'll need are roving, needles, and then some kind of surface to needle felt on. So you'll need wool roving. And wool roving comes in many shapes and sizes, but what it is is that it's wool fibers carded together and put into a single direction. And these are just long strips that have been wound up into these little bundles. You can buy them this way, or you can get them in packs like this with different colors depending on your project and what you'll need. Or you can even find them in just big hanks or bags of wool roving. This particular wool roving is nice um, for the inside or the core of your projects. It's slightly uh, thicker fiber, um, like a little more coarse, and it's perfect and it's cheaper to use on the inside. And then that way you can use a, just a plain white fiber that's coarse on the inside, and then a nice fine fiber that's a nice pretty color on the outside. And so you use a little bit less of this fiber that's slightly more expensive than this one. You'll also need needles. Felting needles are measured in gauge. And the smaller the number, the coarser or wider the needle. So you can have a 36, 38, 40, 42. And if you get to a 42, that's actually a thinner or smaller needle. So here we have a 36. So this is a coarse needle. A 38. This is about a medium needle and a 40 or a fine needle. So these are used for initial shaping, like coarse uh, felting, and then like joining bigger pieces together. Medium size, you can use it for sculpting, joining pieces, and then you can start to add detail work. And then a 40 or a fine needle is more for detail work and smoothing the area of your uh, piece, so smoothing the surface of the piece. You can also go down to a 42, and this one's extra fine. This one is perfect for that really teeny tiny detail work. Let's say you're putting a face on a character and you're only using like 10 fibers instead of 50, you really need a, a, a either a fine or an extra fine needle to really get in there easily. You can also have different shapes of your within your needle. So here is a 38, same as this one, but it's actually a star shape. So most felting needles are going to be triangles. That's your um, like generic shape. So these are triangles, this is a triangle triangle. Um, but you can also have star shapes that will make your work go faster. And the difference between the two, so a diamond would have three sides to the end of the needle versus a star shape will have four sides. And usually it's a much shallower work surface as well. You can also have spirals, meaning that the barbs on the end of the needle go in a uh, circular fashion, and that usually translates to less noticeable holes in your piece. When you needle felt on the surface, you'll have um, visible holes, and the larger the gauge, or yeah, the larger um, or the coarser gauge will leave bigger holes. And so that's why you want a fine needle to finish off the surface of your piece so you don't see those big holes. You also have needles that have reverse barbs, meaning they go in an, a, the different, a different direction from your regular needles. 
So instead of pushing your fibers inside of your piece with a reverse needle, you're actually pulling them out. It's really handy if you're making um, like animals that have long coats, so a dog, you would felt your piece with a regular needle and then you would grab your reverse barbs, stab it in and actually pull out fibers to get that nice fuzzy coat. Sometimes you buy needle felting needles and they will not have any color. And so this one's a medium size needle. I know that I can remember that because I've kept the packaging for it. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes they won't actually come with a handy color and you'll just have to keep them straight um, with what they are. And I would usually recommend to keep that packaging. You can needle felt with just a single needle. This is how you hold it. You hold it at the end. You never want to hold it where the barbs are because these are very, this end is very sharp to be able to go into your um, piece. If you want to help yourself on that, like you, you, you either kind of struggle with your hands or you just, sometimes it does get tiring to hold this and to be needle felting for long periods of time with just a single needle. They do sell needle holders that will have a protective cap and that you can put three, two, or even one needle within the needle tool. The next tool that you'll need is some kind of surface for you to needle felt on. You don't really want to work on your lap or on your hands because that means you're going to be stabbing your piece and inevitably you're going to stab yourself and that's no fun. So you can use a felting mat like this. It's just a piece of fairly dense foam. You don't want a surface that's going to have a lot of give on you because that's going to be harder on your wrist. So something kind of smooth and firm like this. You can also use a mat and they sell these specifically for needle felting and it's just like a, a little brush mat that you sit your uh, project on and then you felt your piece on that project. Sometimes what will happen is that you will have your piece and you're working on it. The fibers end up sticking to brush mats. One way you can avoid that is getting just a little piece of flannel. Go ahead and put it down over your brush mat and then felt your piece on that. And so that way you're felting, you're felting, you're felting and it's going to come off pretty easily and it's not going to have a lot of little uh, flyaways. So those are the basic supplies you'll need for making 3D shapes um, like this ball or like this little almond shape. But if let's say you want to work with a flat piece, so you want to make almost like a painting kind of style. Um, or you want to draw a little figure on a flat piece, you will need some kind of wool, felted wool fabric. So you can get either little charm packs like this that have various colors, or they do sell wool fabric by the yard, and it'll give you a nice flat surface to work with. And you can felt your designs on top of it. Now that we've covered all the basic tools, we can start to go over some basic techniques that you'll need to make your needle felting projects. So for our basic needle felting techniques, you're going to take your roving, pull out a tuft of fibers, and what you're going to do is you're going to start felting into whatever shape you are working with. Let's say we're gonna start with a circle. So we take the end. I usually kind of pick it up in my hands and I start pulling the end fibers towards me until I have like a little, almost like a little roll. And then grab either a needle felting tool or just a, a single needle and start felting down. And then once it's not really going anywhere, your fibers are pretty attached at this point, um, or at least anchored together, we're gonna go ahead and keep rolling it 
keep it as tight as you can. And if you want to circle, you kind of want to start pushing those ends together to start forming the ball. Just go nice and slow, especially when you're starting out. You really don't want to be stabbing yourself. Um, another thing to keep in mind is you want to stab in the same direction going in and coming out. Meaning that if I stab it in like this at this angle, I don't want to then change my angle because what you're doing is putting stress at the end of that needle. The needle is really thin. And so if you start to bend it when it's in your piece, it's going to break. And you definitely don't want to mess with a broken needle. So just whatever angle you put it into your, the, you put the needle into your piece, you want to take it out at that same angle. And just take it off of your mat and kind of see where you're at. And this is pretty loosey-goosey, so I'm going to keep rolling. And then put it down on the mat, kind of pinch it together. And grab your coarse needle and start pushing the fibers together. So here we have like, the beginning of that circle. And you want to make sure that your base to whatever you're making is fairly dense and you've um, felted it enough to where it's going to be stable. So we want to keep felting. And just keep turning your piece. You can gently guide your fibers. So here I have like a tuft of fiber that it's not really smooth. It's kind of creating a divot here and I have a bunch of fiber over here. You can kind of guide your fiber a little bit with your needle. You can't do a bunch of fiber because that starts to push your needle. See how that's pushing in and you really don't want that because you could break a needle. But like a little bit of surface tension and pushing it over is okay. You don't have to work with just circles. You can also make squares and rectangles. It depends on how like the direction that you stab your fibers in so if I were wanting to have more of a circle I would stab more into these corners this side I don't want that I want more of a cylinder or even like a square or cube um, so I would keep stabbing flattening the sides that need to be flattened or smoothed out but making sure that these two sides if I want a cylinder are nice and flat. You can also lay colors on top of one another. Let's say I only want a little oval of blue and the rest to be red. So I would take a tuft of red, kind of spread it out, maybe get it in different directions, and then decide where I want it to go. Grab your needle and then it might be a little difficult to see where your needle is at compared to your fingers, so just be careful, go slow, and stab your fibers in. Here's where a star needle actually comes in handy. So it's a much shallower and faster felting process with the star tips. I would grab one of those if you're gonna do this. That way you aren't in you aren't risking pushing the red into the blue where you don't want it and here's what you end up with once you go all the way around and felt everything down and I did that edge of the red so now you can see that that the back is completely covered but I still have this little oval of blue I wanted to show you another technique you can use to make a nice crisp edge so if you can see I have a fairly crisp edge on this side, but this side is still pretty fuzzy. I did that by getting a piece of cardboard, folding it in half, and you can felt your piece inside of the cardboard. Just sandwich it in, get your felting needle. 
and you can create nice flat edges to pieces that way. Just go nice and slow. That way you don't risk damaging your needle and you can get a nice flat area. So if we look now, our piece has a flat side on the side. Here's how you can attach two pieces together. If I want to make a little person, so I have this head, I can hold them together. I can either hold it with my hands or you can get a little pin and pin them together. And then bring your wisps together between the two pieces and felt them down. If I felt diagonally or at an angle, I'm anchoring these two together, but if I end up poking through like this, the blue is going to poke through. So just go around that piece, doing that. What you're ending up doing is pulling fibers from this piece and embedding them inside of this one. And you can flip around and do the same thing. Stab inside of this piece to push the fibers in the other. Now that those are anchored but not completely felted, you can take a few more wisps, separate out the fibers until they're going different directions, and then place them against your piece where that join, where the two pieces join, and felt it down. And just keep adding more fiber if you feel like you need it. So here I'm not too happy, I'm still gapping, so I'm going to add a little bit more here. If let's say instead of 3D you are working with a flat piece, it's very similar in that You would take your piece, like right now I'm working on the sun, I would take a tuft, I'm going to fold it, take your needle felting needle, decide where you're going to put it. I'm going to start with the top corner over here and put it down into the piece. And you're just going to keep stabbing into the piece in the direction that you want the fibers to be felted into the fabric underneath. And so I'm going to stab gently in the center. Don't have a lot of fibers to work with here, so I don't want to overdo it or be really vigorous or use even um, like a heavy gauge, large gauge needle that's going to be too much. It's actually going to end up pushing too many fibers over to the other side. I'm going to pull my roving a little up and I'm going to make sure that my needle is going down exactly where I want it. And then gently push it down. And then don't pull it up but keep it within your piece and slowly felt the fibers in. And then when you feel like you have a secure corner, then you can fold your fabric back, fold your fiber back, sorry, and then start felting in back the way you had come. And to give it a little more definition, kind of how these have, instead of trying to get right on that line, right on the edge, I actually go a little bit out. So I push the fibers over and then I go in very gently. So push and very gently push them in. It's almost like you're straddling that outline of it. So it creates that nice defined edge. 
Because if you don't, you end up with wisps, kind of like this. I was in a hurry on this part. And you end up with wisps right there. So here's a closer image. Another thing that can be done so you don't end up with a bunch of wisps like this, I usually take my needle and wrap it around the little wisp here until you kind of catch it on those barbs and you'll notice that it it's not going anywhere, it's stuck on those barbs. And then decide, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put them down here. Don't lift up. Keep it within the piece, but just go back and forth, back and forth until you anchor the very edge of those fibers. And so now that they're anchored, then I can use the needle to kind of push those fibers around and make sure that I can felt them in exactly where they need to go. And that way you don't end up with a bunch of little wisps at the end of your project. You can kind of embed those in as you go. Another technique that is used in both 3D shaping and flat pieces is using a little tiny wisp of fiber to add details. So you don't need a bunch of fiber. In fact, it's better for you to use little tiny pieces like this. So let's say I want to add a little face to my son. So I'm going to grab a little wisp like this. It's really not a lot of fiber. In fact, if you had a smaller piece, you'd want to use even less. I think this will be enough for um, a smile at least. So I take my wisp, I grab my felting needle, and I would recommend either using like a medium or a fine needle. I would not use a coarse one. What you'll end up doing with a coarse one is pushing all your fiber through and you really won't have any left on your surface. So the smaller the better. So I will go ahead and use a fine needle or a 40 gauge. Decide where I want the facial features to go. Let's say I want the smile here. So I can fold my fiber, kind of decide that's the center point of the smile. And once again, leave your needle inside the piece and just push the fibers through. So that's anchored now, enough I feel. So I'll spread those out and just start pushing on the edges again like you were doing on this edge but for the mouth. So just kind of catch the very edge of the fibers. If you have to almost lay the needle and then push it in, you can. And once I feel that that is anchored, then I will start moving up on the smile and choose the next spot where you feel like it's going to turn. So we'll go ahead and push that in there. And notice for the wisps, I'm not really trying to hit the center because it's really, really hard to hit the center. What I'm mainly doing is catching that very edge of the fiber and the edge where I want that smile and pushing it in there. Double back and do the same thing. Lay your fibers down and push on the edge of that detail until you get back to the center. And if you need to move fibers around, you definitely can. Just kind of gently push them and felt them down. And you'll want to do the same for the other side. And there you are. If you find that you still have a long tail here, you can go ahead and grab some scissors. Make sure that you've felt it down as far as you can. And just get really as close as you can to that wisp. 
so you don't have any fibers sticking up. Usually I say if you can felt them all down, great. And if not, if felting more down would create a thicker edge, then go ahead and stop and clip. After you finish with a smile, you can go ahead and add eyes as well. Because they are round and they aren't a straight line, I usually don't do the straight um, detail technique. I actually do what's more in line with um, filler technique in that you grab your wisp, but instead of doing a straight line and trying to curl it around and make it work, you actually spread your fibers out and get them going in all different directions. And try and guess, try and get to as close as you can um, how, mi how much you'll need for that eye. Until you have this little ball of fibers. And you just stab into the middle of it. Take it up and then stab it into your flat piece. And felt it down until you have the nice um, detail added. Um, definitely if you need to fix up the edges you can, just do it the same way you did the mouth. Just kind of stab just outside of the edge of the detail and you'll capture all of those uh, little wisps and extra fibers. And here I added the detail, the like um, light detail in the eyes, just with a little, another piece, much smaller, but with white fiber. And just same thing, mash it around until you have the fibers going in every single direction, kind of curl it up into a ball, and then stab it in place. Let's say you don't have the exact color that you need, but you might have different colors that you can combine to get that color. So what you do is you lay out your fiber. Let's say this was completely white, and then you would grab your purple and do the same thing, lay out some purple, And then usually you can just pick them all up, make sure that they're all going in the same direction, and pull the fibers apart. And you'll repeat this, keep pulling them apart and combining them, pull apart, combine, until you get a more or less solid color like this. And then you can use this in your project. In addition to your basic tools and techniques, there are extras that you can get that would definitely help you apart and apart from like the needle tool, that's an extra. You don't really need it to start, but it's very nice and it saves your wrist and your hand from getting too cramped and tired. You also can get little tools to help clean your surfaces. So this one's nice. It has a little brush edge to kind of clear off the extra um, roving that's left. It's especially handy when you're switching from different colors. So if you have a really deep red and you change to a white, sometimes you can have red left over on the surface of your, um, on your work surface, and that can end up coloring your other fiber. This other edge is also handy to protect your fingers. So if there is a really fiddly spot that you're worried about, you can go ahead and grab a hold of this, put it right next to where you're going to be felting, grab your needle and felt away. You can even stab in between those little prongs and you're not in danger of stabbing yourself. Instead of putting the eyes on your piece with fiber, you can also put in eyes into your piece. So you try and find the right size you want and then you would stab it into either your flat surface or a 3D shape like this little alpaca. So I used the eyes, I, I made the body up, I put the head, put the uh, details on, and then I added the eyes. So it's wire backed. I stab a little bit into the shape and then I push the eye in and glue it down so that it's not coming out. A ruler is also a handy tool to have. Some patterns will call for you know, you'll need 10 centimeters of your roving and you're going to split it between several parts. So it is a handy tool to have in case the, it calls for a certain measurement. Another tool that is 
fairly helpful are these little silicone thimbles. They're meant for going on your finger while you're sewing, or these specific ones are used for anytime you're using a hot glue gun and you're using high temperatures. But I found that if I use them during needle felting, let's say you're having to get really close to that edge, if you were to hold it with your fingers, you're more likely to accidentally stab yourself. But if you used these tools, then you can get in there and really get up close. And if you hit this, it's okay because it's the silicone getting stabbed. I hope you found these basics helpful to get you started making 3D figures or flat felted pieces. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>